Welcome back to the Zero Weakness Podcast, where we talk about how to be a better lifter, how to be a better coach, and everything in between. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Hello and welcome to the Zero Weakness Podcast. We are back with another episode. This podcast is sponsored by Establishment Coffee. Go to establishmentcoffee.com.au, use the code 025 and get 25% off your order and free shipping. What are we talking about today, Henny? Um, let's start off with what have you been up to, CJ? What are you doing? Um, Media man, hairdresser. Uh, <laughs> hairdresser. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, but back at training this week, first week back, and I'm so sore. <laughs> <laughs> just having a week off makes such a huge difference. Um, yeah, it's a struggle to walk upstairs. But no, it's fun. I'm, I've really, I've enjoyed training. It's just, uh, it's made me very sore afterwards. Um, but yeah. I'm feeling a bit hot, actually. I'm just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If you can. Oh, what have no. you been up to, Tommy? Catch that on the <laughs> oh, no, the quad tattoo boys. <laughs> oh, that's right. Job stopper. Yeah. <laughs> if my job's, I don't know, leg modelling. Um, <laughs> I went to Perth on the weekend to support Rido from Ground Zero and nice. the rest of the uh, Zero crew from around the place, Cairns and Mackay. Um, the Ruchis put on an amazing competition, as always, literally the best comps that, that are I've ever been to in the world. Wow. Um, so not just in terms of like the venue and warm-up room, but the overall organization, speed, flow of the con- – everything, refereeing, everything was fantastic. So um, absolute kudos to the boys over there for, for putting on an amazing comp. Ryder killed it. He had a great day. He uh, squatted 365. Um, he bench pressed 192.5, uh, big personal best for both of them. He deadlifted 315 on his second – and he got to lock out and it was just so a little close. bit soft. So close. So he felt he locked out, but he got called on on hips and shoulders. Um, as a referee, I probably would have called the same. Looking at the video a thousand times, it could have gone either way. But when I watched it in person, not looking at the video, I would have given him a red light. So I feel like it was a fair call. We pulled 315 on a second, which is a huge PB for him because if his competitor, Max, messed up his second attempt and his third attempt... It would have given Rido first place, so we we were going for the win, uh, but Max got his second anyway, so it, it didn't really change anything. So um, overall, Rido had a, a fantastic performance, fantastic day, and finally put up a squat that he's happy with. Nice high bar as well. <laughs> yeah, what a maniac! What's the go? Um, <clears throat> so Rucci's competitions they look they look hectic. They actually look crazy. Yeah, I've heard. Um, I was speaking to someone at APL Nationals, and apparently that's like their. I don't, I don't know if I should be talking about someone else's business, but that's their main source of income, their comps. So they put on like the best, the baddest comps there is. And like, that's why they're so good. Oh, I wouldn't say it's their main source of income. Like they're a very successful gym in general. Mm-hmm. Lots of members, lots of coaching. Uh, I think they have seven staff plus the two two Ritchie brothers themselves. Uh, so they're a big business. Um, but their their venue is specifically designed around their competitions. Yeah, so they've got like the... Um, those those massive like music festival sort of steel framework around their platform a giant giant version of that that's permanently there um, these big soundproof curtains they've developed but uh, I can't remember if both of them or just one of them have a background of like software engineering in the mines and they've developed their own competition software uh, wow. which is just it's unreal like it does everything you wish competition software does it does that's nuts um, and everyone has been pressuring them for years to sell it to other people but it's just their little thing that's cool so it's it's amazing like it, it's it's pretty i mean at the end of the day it's powerlifting competition but all the things that you think to yourself this could be done a bit better this could be they've done it yeah there's literally very little that they could improve on like off the top of my head i cannot think of a thing that they could have made better about that comp are they affiliated with apl uh they were running apl comps for a while they're trialing us apl now mm-hmm. um as a as a tested alternative so the future of that i'm not sure um, that's more of a question for for Daniel or the Ruchis themselves, um, but they run yeah they've run PA they've run uh, APU they've run, they've run most federations yeah uh, I think they've run all federations besides maybe Capo but I can't say for sure yeah well yeah. good on them the, yeah the, I hear, hear a lot of people say the comps are the gold standard it's so just it's just hard they're so far away yeah, yeah, yeah. is it Perth is that where yeah. they are yeah. Perth. Yeah, which is I, I'm pretty sure that's part of Australia, but I don't, I'm not good at geography, so don't quote me on that. I think it's part of Bali, uh, mm. something like that. Pretty mm. much, yeah. <laughs> Gidge dog, what have you been up to? Uh, hanging out with my mom and dad. 
Yeah, nice. they're visiting this week. So a little bit of training, work, and just hanging with the fam. It's been really nice. They're going to New Zealand next week. And, yeah, so just going to spend all my time with them this weekend. Except for Strength Quest on Sunday. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Excited for mm. that. What about you, Henny? Um, <clears throat> what have I been doing? Nah, nothing exciting. Just life admin. Bit of training here and there. Yep. Actually, I've got some stats for you for my last seven days. Yeah, hit me with the Strava. The Strava. <laughs> so these are, my, these are my Garmin, uh, Garmin stats. The Filipino Kipchoge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Minus the speed. Uh, so <clears throat> and s- my average daily steps... <laughs> <laughs> my average daily steps in the last seven days is 20,000 a day. Jeez. So average 20,000 steps a day. I clocked up 70 kilometers in the last seven days in running. I trained in the gym for four hours. So it was like three sessions. And then I swum, what was it? 325 meters. I only had one swimming session. So that's what I did in seven days. That's amazing. You it's pretty crazy, eh? You mm. could have said it way shorter by just saying, I'm better than all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We, Thanks for the reminder. We, we, got, we got a little group chat, and um, I chucked it up in the group chat, and Jack Barnes, Declan, they li- they liked it. Like, that's hectic. And Josh Takua wrote, wrote back, bro's training for the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> the decathlon. Yeah. Oh, I was like, man. yeah, it's pretty nuts. But no, I was pretty... Uh, I didn't actually, I've never looked at that metric, like the weekly breakdown. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's wild. Mm. Really mm. cool, man. What What's that event in the Olympics where they, oh, the steeplechase. Yeah. They jump what's over that? the thing and land in, the, in water. the water. Is that still uh, an yeah. Olympic event? I don't know. I think so, yeah. Because when you go down to the track, every track's still got a steeple. Yeah. Mm. And if that's it is, cool. why? <laughs> yeah, no, that's weird. Do you just cool off or what's what, the go? What, what's the point <laughs> of the water? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, you just... Because you have to jump over it, eh? Or yeah. jump, yeah. S- stand on it and then jump in the water. Yeah. I just remember they had one at QE2. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good, uh, at lots of fond memories there. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> uh, um, what else have I got here? Sorry, my phone died. What are, what are you grateful for this week, Bridget? Uh, a good night's sleep because I didn't get one last night and I'm really <laughs> tired today. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for getting a good night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm buggered. I can't even string a sentence together at the moment. Sorry. <laughs> Messed that up. <laughs> James Hendry, what's your gratitude of the week? Uh, mine's, I don't know if this, it's a, it's a grateful for me, but I'm grateful for a day off on Monday. <laughs> Thomas, these fucking, these public holidays have been rolling in fast in 2022. <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I yeah. love giving money to people doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the last one of the year, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, who knows? I never, I never know that they're coming. Someone will be. Well, here's my beef, right? <laughs> What's the public holiday on Monday? Don't know. Well, it's the, either the Queen's. Queen's or the King's birthday. It's the Queen's, Queen's birthday, birthday, and she's Queen's dead. Birthday. So this is just yeah. a fucking rot. If I don't get presents <laughs> when I'm dead, if I don't get like something when I'm dead. For my birthday, I'm going to be angry. I'm pretty sure she doesn't get <laughs> gifts. To I guarantee someone will give her flowers. <laughs> but I feel oh, like we've had man. about a million public holidays this year. We always do. Yeah. Australians, uh, Australia is the land of public holidays. Fuck, it's good. We love I, a long weekend. I think we, are, we should check the stats on this, but I'd say we're probably one of the qu- countries that has the most in the world. It's an employee's, wor- an employer's worst nightmare, right? <laughs> the amount of public holidays we have. It's all right. CJ, what are you grateful for? I am grateful for my friends. I'm very uh-huh. blessed with with great friends. So. You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or are we associates? No. Colleagues. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're colleagues. We're Sub- colleagues. Subordinates. <laughs> <laughs> what does that word even mean? <laughs> it means like the people below you. <laughs> no, not at all. No, that's really cool, man. I am grateful. This is a bit weird i'm grateful for life Ooh, uh, wow. after, after watching someone die outside my house yesterday yeah. uh, so i was just telling these guys before the podcast there was a motorcycle accident at a big intersection that's directly outside the the apartments that i live in and, and the guy didn't pull through so it's just one of those reminders that it can all it can all end pretty quickly uh and so i'm, I'm grateful that i'm here that i'm doing stuff and it makes the uh little inconveniences in, in life seem a bit more insignificant Yes. Mm. That's a that's a solid grady. Yeah. Mm. All right. I said we're going to do this every week. CJ, what's your quote? If you didn't come prepared, I've asked you to do one thing for the podcast, <laughs> even though you set it up. <laughs> yeah. I've always brought a quote. All right, go on. Um, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Those who avoid failure also avoid success. Nice. Ooh. 
That's cute. Th- that's really annoying. <laughs> yeah. Because my quote was going to be the one that's like the uh, something along the lines is like the the person who says that they can and the person that says that they can't are both right. Mm. Ooh, I like that. Which too. is pretty much the same thing. So. Thanks. You can. I'll change. I can change my. <laughs> you can cross me off the friends list now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's good. Bridget, this is one of my favorites. Until one has loved an animal, a part of one's soul remains unawakened. Ooh. <laughs> Similar to a Nirvana, Nirvana quote: "It's okay to eat fish because they don't have any feelings." <laughs> Which song is that again? Something <laughs> in yeah. the way. <laughs> Can I just say, I know like it's probably <laughs> rude to comment on Kurt Cobain, but his lyrics are just like they're nonsense. Yeah. They don't make any sense. <laughs> Why is the music so catchy? It doesn't mean anything. That's true. Anyway, Have that's you rare. ever listened to Plateau, the lyrics in that? Nothing on top but a bucket and a mop and an illustrated book about birds. There you go. <laughs> yeah. How that's good. a line from that. Fantastic. <laughs> Like that's why I listen to rap music. <laughs> yeah, because that—that's poetry. Yeah, that shit's real. That hits the soul. <laughs> you, look, you look up the lyrics sometimes, and it'll just be like money, but fifteen times in a row. Yeah, so like money, 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 money. And listen to me going, that's awesome. Like deep. deep. I love that. Ooh. All right, my quote's real corny this week, but fuck, stay hard, David Goggins. Oh, the big G. Yeah, you know, yeah. seminar in Feb. Nah, it's too expensive. Yeah, it's very expensive. What is very it, like 500 bucks very a ticket? Nah, it was more than that, eh? I can't remember, but I remember going, oh, I'm not going to go. Yeah, yeah, that's what <laughs> I did. I was like, yeah, no yeah, chance. I was like, oh, what? And then, oh. Yeah, stupid. You can guarantee that if you follow his content and have listened to his book or his podcast or whatever, everyone's got a formula. 100%. So even like me, I say the same three things on repeat. So it, it probably won't be as mind blowing. People just like to see that stuff in the flesh, I guess. That, I think that was it for me as well. Like, what, what am I? How am I meant to leave there? Am I meant to leave there any more motivated than he already makes me? I don't think that's possible. Mm-hmm. But I try not to rely on motivation. It's more about mm-hmm. discipline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a lie too. But <laughs> no, nah, there was one uh, something you said the other day that was really good. That I said chase. Yes, chase discipline, not dopamine. Did so, I say something that? like that? Yeah. Where the fuck did or, I say or, that? Or don't chase dopamine, chase discipline. Either way. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. You sure he right. wasn't saying don't go chasing waterfalls? <laughs> <laughs> In a real melodic sense. <laughs> no, because we were talking about the urge to check your Instagram. We oh, yeah, that's right. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the dopamine hit you get from always checking your phone. And you were saying, yeah, don't chase dopamine, chase discipline. Yeah, right. I don't even remember saying that, but yeah, that's a fucking, that's a sick line. Uh, <laughs> Tom Brady for grievance. Oh, I thought we don't do this anymore. No, but I just thought, you know what? <laughs> Let's fucking chuck it in there. No, I'm too <laughs> grateful these days. How yeah. good. Nice. Fucking hell. That's good. That's sick. I mean, I have a book of them, but. <laughs> <laughs> and the public holiday. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get stuck into it. I've got a few topics that I want to talk about. This episode might be a little bit quicker than usual. We've all got a bit of a schedule we're trying to adhere to, aka Thomas. Um, so I've got a few things I wanted to talk about. The first thing I want to bring up is any tips on how to get lean without counting calories. Eat less? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Have any of you guys had any experience with getting lean without counting calories? I didn't I didn't start. I didn't believe in counting calories until I was maybe like 20, mid-20s, mm-hmm. sometime in my mid-20s. I, I'd never counted a cal- calorie until I was maybe 25 or something like that. No, 2014, so whenever that was. Yeah, 25. It was 25 when I first started paying actual attention to calories. Mm -hmm. Um, And so before that, it's just like if the scale's going up and you want it to stop going up, eat less. If it's going down and you want it to go up, eat more. And so like can you get lean without calories? Yeah, sure you can. It just adds a layer of chaos and inconsistency. Um, And so, um, you know, there's, there's benefits and deficits to doing both. Uh, but if you're if you're serious about actually chasing a particular goal, the the quickest path is going to be a straight line, and removing that layer of uncertainty and inconsistency is going to get you there quicker. Hundred percent. I've just got a little story about um all my mates that a lot of my mates that play footy, um all they know is hard work. Mm-hmm. So you know they'll be like, all right, we're going away in eight weeks' time. Let's get shredded for this holiday. All they do train harder, don't eat shit, 
And like they don't count their calories, and all of a sudden, eight weeks rolls around, they're all, all in hectic shape. Mm-hmm. They just don't overthink it. They don't. They don't know any better though. They don't know how to count calories. They don't understand how much uh, protein they're getting in. They don't understand that this has got too much fats. All they go is, all right, vegetables are good for you, not too much rice, more chicken, and they just do that, and they all get in hectic shape. So yeah. sometimes I think we all just overthink it a little bit, uh, too much as well. I think where people go wrong with it too is that. If you know how to count calories and track stuff, like automatically tracking food has a, a layer of inconsistency. Like there's human error and there's also like uh, measurement errors. Th- there's lots of errors that can feed into it. And people become really hyper obsessed with the numbers and not realize that your body doesn't give a fuck if it's 2,401 versus 2,399 calories. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't know the difference between all that stuff. And it's so um, sometimes removing uh, some knowledge makes things a little bit easier to achieve because someone who knows that they can count is going to try and cheat the system as much as possible. Uh, but potentially, potentially. You know, they're going to try and like play around with things and change things and keep some yummy foods here and there. Whereas, you know, your mates that you're talking about, they're just like, no, the eight, next eight weeks is going to suck. No, mm. I'm not going to eat KFC. I know I'm going to train harder. I know I'm going to be hungry. And that's all the stuff that comes with dieting. So they're just like, I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. And it's like, the consistency and the the discipline really that's getting them the goal. It's the same thing if you're counting calories. It's just easier to try and um, yeah, bend the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's um, one of those cases. Like the more we know, like yeah. uh, you know, with same with strength training, it's a hundred percent the same with strength. Like training. when we talk about strength training, we always talk about this as well. Like idiots get results too. Uh, I'm not calling all these IFBB pros idiots, but they're all fucking jacked. They're all fucking strong. They don't know about periodization. They don't know about programming, but they're all fucking, you know, they can all bench press 200 kilos. They can all squat 300 kilos just from going in there and working hard every single day. Staying yep. consistent. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even even go back like 30 years, 20 years, mm. maybe not even that long, 15 years, people were getting to bodybuilding stages, conditioned and shredded without counting calories mm-hmm. they were just literally like oh chicken and broccoli yeah yes we know in hindsight that it's dumb mm-hmm. that you don't need to do that that there are smarter ways of doing it uh but there is kind of and and you know this is an extreme example there is you, you can make things work mm. you know like it's an extreme example of bodybuilding if you're just looking to get a little bit leaner there's no reason why you have to count calories it's funny you still look at like our old bodybuilding nutrition programs from only 10 years ago and there's still uh there were still coaches 10 years ago saying all right we're going to start cutting so we're going to swap our steak to chicken yep and you know white rice to brown rice yeah but these guys got results yeah <laughs> But they're just in a calorie deficit. Make sure you're eat, drinking eight liters of water a day. Like, yeah. Just dumb shit. Yeah, yeah. People still do it today. It's, mm. it's not gone. Yeah. Is there any bro? Is there any bro shit that you guys still keep in your, like, anything that you guys still do? Or, I don't know. Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's stuff. I'm, I'm trying to think of specific examples. There's stuff I know for a fact don't matter that much that I that I still kind of do. Um. Yeah, I can't. I can't think of a specific example off the top of my head. What about you? Um. <clears throat> nah, but I've started doing it again. It's not really. It's not too broy, but like, just pyramid pyramid sets. So I just work up, get uh-huh. to a top set, work back down. The last time I did that, I was probably twenty one years old, and I've just started doing that again with like dips and pull ups and things like that. Um. Yeah, that's like one thing that I've started doing again. Nice. Gidge dog? Nothing. No. Nah. No. Nah. No crazy 21s, no drop sets, no gigantic 21s. sets. No. I mean, yeah. I, I do g- drop sets. Mm. I, I, I guess now, like, um, I, I do a bit of cardio after I train and make sure. I guess that's a thing that's like after you lift weights, mm-hmm. do cardio, but I don't think it really makes a difference when you do it. Yeah. What I used to do is I used to walk before, oh, like I'd walk before for 20 minutes on the treadmill on an incline and then after my session I'd do 20 minutes as well. Nice. That's something I won't implement again. But I mean, <laughs> it's just a good way to get some walking in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. I used to, where my gym was though, when I used to do that, <laughs> and I used to be like, I'm so lucky to have this view. The treadmill was set up looking over the beach. <laughs> Nice. So I could have just been outside walking in the sun, the getting beach. some real vitamin D, but instead yeah. of all this treadmill. And I remember I used to like film it, be like, "This is fucking heaven." <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Um, fuck. What was I saying again? Um, 
we were talking about what bro stuff we do. Mm. But the, oh, ori- yeah. the original question was around counting calories. Yeah. So how to get lean without counting calories. I start when I started with Rochelle, I was 93 kilos and I got down to like 85. Mm-hmm. So that was through her nutrition. Uh, you know, she did me up a plan. I just followed that. But then um, I bounced back up to about 87. And then after that was when I started running again. Mm-hmm. So I started running around 87, 88 kilos. All I did was more activity, stopped eating as much, and I started to slowly see the weight drop. Mm-hmm. Right now I'm 81.8. So intuitively, like we said before, you just got to eat a little bit less, maybe do a little bit more activity, get a few more steps in there. Like I said before, I average about 20,000 steps a day. Um, that's including the running and it breaks it down the average or whatever. But um, yeah, just a little bit more activity, eat a little bit less, make sure your protein's relatively high, and that's... That's pretty much uh, my best advice we can give you. Mm. It's pretty standard. It's a pretty standard approach. Yeah, no, I mean, like, even as something as if you do the same thing every day, every week, same amount of activity, like you've got a pretty consistent eating routine, pretty consistent training routine. It's normally just a case of like pick something that's high calorie that you um, eat that you know is kind of discretionary and just remove it. Mm-hmm. Like if you like to have a big like caramello ice frappe every morning there's probably like 500 calories in that drop that out all of a sudden you're in a deficit six weeks later you're probably a little bit leaner yeah what i've done as well just recently is because i had a really bad um relationship with like lollies i loved lollies so i had to just get rid of them out my diet and you know people associate dark chocolate with being healthy this place is poisonous for lollies yeah Mm. (laughs) It's the I didn't really eat place. lollies until I started I never working. Never ate lollies at <laughs> yeah. the gym, even when people brought them. Until we started keeping them at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> keep going. So I um, so because you know people associate dark chocolate with being healthy for the antioxidants. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so I started eating dark chocolate at night time. I was having about four squares, which is like half a block of lint. And until I realized I was having almost twice the amount of calories that I was when I'd have like 150 grams of lollies. So now because I'm, yeah. Yeah. So now I'm tracking my calories again. I've introduced the lollies back again, but I'm just trying to be a little bit more mindful of my consumption, not just have the whole bag next to me, weigh them out, have 150 grams. Nice. So that's one thing I've done. Um, So yeah, swapping foods, you can do that. Uh, Sorry, I'm. I've got an announcement. Go on. What? Zero cans. We're opening. Zero cans? Yep. That's the next zero. Go on. I'm allowed to announce it. Zero cans. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that a, is it are random gonna, time? Yeah, well, I was, meant to, I was meant to do it at the start, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Because I've realized, so I'm I'm making the announcement like publicly tonight. Oh. But on this, it won't come out till next week. Did you forget because you've got so many gyms now? And you just like, <laughs> you no, just no, no, no. I just forget to <laughs> forgot to announce it at the start. I thought this morning, oh, I might actually say it on the podcast. Um, but then I forgot. Fuck yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice. So um, Zero Cans, we're opening with uh, Wes and Brooke Vic up there. Amazing. Uh, they are, they're running the show. They're, they're, they're the co-owners. Um, Khan Stevenson is also a co-owner. Uh, so he's got some say and some input into that gym too. Um, we should, we're, we're going to tell everyone that the opening date is uh, early next year. So Jan, Feb. Uh, but the reality is we should be able to get the build done hopefully before the new year. Wow. Um, so we're, we're saying that just in case we run into any uh, hurdles, but I'm hoping to get this one opened as quick as possible. We already have all the equipment re- waiting, ready to go. Um, we get access to the building from, what's the date? Tomorrow. We get access to the so building cool. from tomorrow. Uh, there are a lot of renovations to be done. So that's going to eat up at least a month, probably two months. Then we've got the actual gym build itself, which will take a week. Um, so that's coming to, to Cairns soon. That's sick. What's the official color? Green. Uh, it's, yeah, it's turquoise. turquoise. Nice. Turquoise. Ooh, okay. It's going to be a beautiful. Teal, teal slash teal. turquoise. So Cairns already has a, um, a, a pretty uh, bustling powerlifting community. So, so we're hoping to contribute to that and uh, continue to grow powerlifting in the uh, great north of Queensland. Amazing. How good. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> How to, another one other topic, another question. Is how to train after being sick. CJ, this yeah. is yours. Mm. <laughs> this is yours. Don't go as hard as I did. Because <laughs> then you got doms for a week. Yeah. Um, but in <laughs> yeah, I should actually take my own advice. Because the last time 
I trained after coming back from being sick. I had COVID. And all I did was the week I came back, I just did my deload week mm-hmm. again. I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Which I should have done, but I was too excited to lift <laughs> the numbers that <laughs> Bridget gave me because it's finally <laughs> getting heavy. So I went for it and now I can't walk. So, uh. <laughs> yeah. Talk but yeah, take it easy. There's, yeah. a, there's a couple of things to consider here. Like the type of sickness matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, because some sicknesses you can literally just train through and you'll you'll probably be fine. Um, you might have to turn down the intensity or get tired a little bit quicker. Um, other sicknesses are really going to be impossible to, to train through and um, I probably recommended that you don't train through. Uh, and also how long you are sick for, how sick you are, how much it affects things like your body weight, the nutrition that you're getting in afterwards. A pretty safe bet is, you know, if we're talking something like a, a virus, a bit of a gastro bug, uh, a common cold, COVID, whatever, it's normally going to affect you for the better part of a week. And a good strategy is to come back in, just as you guys are sort of suggesting, um, on something. I, I would consider it a reload, which is just going to be lower intensity, lower volume weights to ease back into training. Then you should just be able to pick up where you left off. Mm-hmm. Um, normally, I mean, lots of people have the capacity to just pick up where they left off, but like CJ was sort of getting at, it just messes you up a bit. You tend to feel a bit shit or maybe you go into it expecting um, that you're going to perform 100% and then you fall short of that and you you get a bit down on yourself when in reality you'd just be sick. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it, it's hard to give a blanket answer to that without some context, but normally it's just a small period of time um, to get back into things and then just keep going. Uh, no, normally you're affected. Dep- if, if if the sickness is pretty full on, you're normally affected to some degree for about the double double the time that you were sick. So people, say, for example, who are knocked out by COVID for a week, normally take about two weeks before they they feel like their training's 100%. Mm. Um, I found that to be a pretty good rule of thumb. Uh, but honestly, just go into it and see how you feel and uh, adjust your training accordingly, which might just mean reducing some volume or intensity until you do feel 100%. Good dog. Yeah, just control all the other factors as well. Try and get enough sleep. Try and eat more. Um, yeah, drink plenty of fluids. Well, that that's what I do. Nice. Yeah. Bit of common sense. Yeah. Exactly. It's really all it is. Yeah. Because mm. like, when you do get sick, you do, do tend to drop your appetite. Mm-hmm. Um, some people even use it as like, oh, I'm sick, so I'm not going to eat as much and I might be able to lose some weight. Mm. It's like, well. Silly. It's, it's, a, it normally doesn't work like that. And B, you normally come back feeling twice as bad uh, when you do mm. get better. Mm. All pretty sound advice. Um, yeah. Like Thomas said, reduce the intensity, reduce the volume, reduce the overall uh, work that you're doing that session. And just take it easy. You're not gonna you're not gonna miss out on much by cruising for a week. You've just been sick. Um, I think that's a really important point to make as well. Mm. Like people freak out. I've lost a week of training. It's like, are you planning on quitting training in two weeks? No. Well, then you've got plenty of time to make up for it. Yeah. Mm. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah. If you've been training consistently for a long time, it's not going to matter. Yeah. Your strength yeah. strength doesn't go anywhere. Mm. That's so so true. Mm. Especially like the point you made about um, usually coming back is twice as long as you've been sick. Mm. It's very easy. Like even for me, I fell into that trap of going, oh, well, I've had a week off, so I should be fresh. But you've been (laughs) sick for a week. It's not a week (laughs) off doing nothing. You've been fighting your sickness. Yeah. And it's very easy. Like, oh, well, if I go into it slowly, then I've wasted two weeks and I'm off track. And yeah, you can really think you're compounding like a bad habit or whatever. But yeah, not the case at all. Yeah, you're just down with the sickness. Um, <laughs> you just quote disturbed. Is that disturbed? Yeah. I knew it was some fucking <laughs> shit middle band. <laughs> no. They're not that great. Are they shit? Are they good? I don't I know. Don't I don't, don't think they're great. Yeah. I don't. Uh, <laughs> you, you just upset ninety percent of our bald listeners. <laughs> our bald listeners. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't upset already. They they're upset now. <laughs> I just upset ninety five percent of the powerlifting community. <laughs> <laughs> gonna get death threats from Westside Barbell. Uh, <laughs> another question for you guys: What would you guys be doing if you weren't lifting? Traveling the world. I don't know how I'd be making money. But Wait, that's what I'd be doing. Nah, <laughs> why is lifting stopping you from doing that? Well, I thought you meant at this job. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, no, that's not what I mean. This job, geez. I love so, this job. That's sorry, why I'm not Bridget, traveling. Uh, sorry, sorry that I'm holding you up for your dream. My no. bad. 
That's why I'm here. Oh I love it here. What are, what are you doing after the podcast? Let's have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> what would you? I'd probably be. I'd probably be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be happy for a change. <laughs> no, oh, Britt, what like what would you be doing if it wasn't for lifting? Like, what other sport would I be doing? Yeah, what other probably activity? Probably athletics. Probably sprinting. <laughs> Give us a Track give us field. a proper answer. <laughs> what do you actually think you'd be doing? Sprinting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What distance? Hundred meters. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That was all I did through school, and I loved it. And I wish I never stopped. Nothing stopping you from starting again. Mm. Yeah, yeah, true. Besides your hamstrings tearing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Do they have a master's division in athletics? Um. Kids, <laughs> you're probably, I don't know, surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's get Bridget back on the track. <laughs> Master's division. Jeez. We set up a we can set up a race, her and Mickey. <laughs> yeah, surely you, know, you got Mickey. You know, when Mickey went through her, her sprinting phase, yeah. Oh, really? Did she have a sprinting phase? Yeah, because I think she, she had an ex athletics background, right? Yeah. Um, and she, she got right into sprinting again. Maybe two years ago. Mm. Oh, yeah. Her coach that she had, I think, uh, Jared K. Maybe. Sorry, I might have butchered that. But the Speed Project in Melbourne, he's got really cool content. Uh, that's what I watch a lot of. Yeah, nice. Um, he kills it. But no, do you know who else would be good in that race? Lisa. Yeah, she's ex track and field as well. She was very fast too, like twelve oh nine. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So she was lightning. Crazy. Whoa. Um, what would you to be doing, James? Rugby league. <laughs> Nah, so I've always had this obsession with, uh, I think I've told you this before, Bridget, but like wrestling, nice, not fucking WWE, like proper wrestling, like what they do like Olympic in America. Wrestling. Yeah, like yeah, collegiate yeah. wrestling. Do we even have it in Australia? We do in Sydney. Okay. Yeah, but I'm obsessed with that. I've always said if I lived in America, I, w- I would have grown up playing football and basketball and done wrestling. Have you seen yeah. that movie yeah. about the... The famous wrestling brothers with Steve Carell. Oh, f- uh, Foxcatcher. Foxcatcher. Have you Great seen that? I've never film. heard of that. No. Yeah, you oh. might be into that. Mm. It's yeah. A, it's a drama, but it's, it's pretty yeah. good. It's a, it's a crazy true, true story. story. Yeah, yeah it's true. Because I follow a page called Flow Wrestling, and um, I just love watching wrestlers. They're fucking animals. Mm. And all, all our favorite, all the really good UFC fighters are really good wrestlers. Yeah. All, all like Div 1 wrestlers in yeah. college. and yeah. the, the best pedigree. And they're, they're fucking brain. animals. Like, you know, you see mm. Jiu-Jitsu. Not having a dig at jujitsu guys, but they're all kind of um, it's to do with their training outside of this sport, obviously. But mm. uh, jujitsu guys are kind of small and wiry, but all the wrestlers, all the collegiate wrestlers, are fucking jacked. You watch yeah. the Olympics; they're all fucking huge. They all got those big like mountain man rounded forward shoulders and big lats, like yeah, that, sort of, oh. and they got huge necks. Yeah, they got yeah. big fucking thick necks. That's how you know not to fuck with someone: their ears and their neck. Their ears and their neck. They ears got a big neck and fucked up ears. <laughs> Don't mess with them. The cauliflower ears. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like Tom Brown, remember that comp we seen that dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? The, I, he comes to a few, um, oh, what's her name? You know, the, the the woman with like red hair, ginger hair, she's really strong, 75 kilo lifter. Gets coached by Robur, SNC. Gets coached by Dennis Savaki. Yeah. I forgot her name. Was she at Iron Underground? Yes. Yeah, I, th- I know I th- who you're talking about. Name? I don't know Jess- her name. Jessica? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, her partner comes with her to, to comps, and he's a he's a he's a bad looking. Yeah, because I think yeah. I remember seeing him at Iron. Underground. He's fucking jacked. Yeah. yeah, he's so muscular. He's got a nice beard, handsome, yeah. and he's got the ears, the <laughs> ears and the, the neck. Yeah. you don't want to fuck with him. Where did th- where did he get it from? He so I think I, seen, I found him on. <laughs> I, this is like the creepiest section <laughs> of a podcast we've <laughs> ever done. We're talking about a person we don't know, and James is raving about. It. I went to his page. I went through every single post back to two. 2012, <laughs> I liked it. Because <laughs> we were like, I liked it. as soon as I seen him, I was like, Thomas, bro, look at that guy. You don't want to fuck with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> he was real nice as well. Really and then we found his Instagram page. I was like, I told you he's a fighter. Yeah, he's a oh, MMA fighter. fighter. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, But he's fucking jacked as well. <laughs> he's a big boy. Yeah. Mm. CJ, would it be fighting for you? Boxing? Yeah, yeah it'd be boxing. Uh, that or playing for the Wallabies. I'm glad I didn't. Try that because the Wallaby team is so trash today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, well, it's trash because it, you're not on it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, either boxing or, or, or footy. Like when you daydream about what you'd be doing, like what is it? Is it that? Um, in terms of sport, yes. Yep. Yeah. What about like um rally? 
drifting. Is drifting a sport? Yeah, yeah, motorsport. I mean, gosh, what a glamorous life that would be. Like to yeah, if I could be an F one driver, which yeah. I could never be, because I'm I wouldn't fit in the cars. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be very light and yeah, be able to fit in the cars, and they mold the seat to your body. Um, but yeah, that would be an awesome life. But yeah, I don't know. But that being said, I don't know if I'd always like to be away from home because they're always traveling. Um, yeah. Maybe it's a job for you, Bridget. Yeah. <laughs> mm. it was Go life, to the most exotic the places in yeah. the world. All, all of those tracks are. <laughs> Monaco. You can hit all the yeah. native animals. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <sorry. laughs> oh, Kiwi bird. Take that off the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! Keepers. <laughs> the native animals. Tom Oh gosh! I, I I was born to be on two wheels. I'd be on a on a bike in in some way, shape, or form. Nice. Uh, whether it was, yeah, I I don't know if I'd just because I stopped doing BMX because because of an accident. I'd maybe downhill or I'm very interested in like velo- velodrome racing. Um, yeah, so something on two wheels, I'd say. Uh, I did. I did toy around with playing ice hockey with my brother again. I played ice hockey a little bit growing up, and I toyed around with um, playing with him again in the last couple of years. And I've, I've gone to a few of their events, and just yeah, uh, they they had a, I can't remember. It was some some barbecue or something, and they played some hockey there, and I went and played with them. And I really enjoy it, uh, but I don't know if I can do team sports. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, there's a commitment aspect as well that I can't commit to with team mm. sports anymore. Even though I loved it growing up, I still mm. love it. You know, I'm obsessed with Do you itch? I do until I get there and I'm like, wait, you're telling me I have to fucking commit three times a week? Yeah. See, I, I don't mind yeah. the commitment. I I get a real thrill out of being able to blame myself for everything mm-hmm. in a sporting context. Yeah. Like I don't I don't want to have a bad game and be like, if this player did this or if this player, you know, passed the puck at this point, it wouldn't mm. have happened like that. I mm-hmm. like I want to be able to say everything was my fault. Yeah. That's the beauty of powerlifting. There's not, yeah, you're only competing against yourself. Mm. I think I'm the same, um, like, with, with team sports. Uh, yeah, some of my mates from church are like, surely, surely you come play third grade with us. Like, some really low grade footy. And I'm just like, oh, it sounds so good. And I, very tempting, but. I, th- nah, I, I think I told you this about, f- would have been five years ago now. I went and played third grade for the Dolphins for one yeah, game. Yeah. And then they asked me to play first grade straight after it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, do you want to sit on the bench for first grade? I was like, no. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> not a chance. Huge How much do you there. reckon it would cost us to get um, Raven to run it straight at CJ in the car park? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, CJ would get folded. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally would. <laughs> I reckon James would put a good shot on Raven. You've played a lot of footy as a kid. Bro, I'm, so you'd know. I'd be able to find videos somewhere of me uh, putting it shot on. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, nah, not now. I'd snap in half. I'm fragile. I'm old too. I'm a veteran. You lose it. 31 he's, years he's old. He's running away you... from his problems, yeah. not into them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Fuck facing that noise. <laughs> um, you know how you're talking about cycling, Thomas? It's not big here, but downhill mountain biking was huge in Christchurch. Yeah. Yeah, I love downhill. Yeah. Did you ever do it? No, nah, not really. Not out, not outside of Bottle Lake Forest as a child. <laughs> Isn't really downhill. Did you have a Kona? A Kona? Yeah. Like the bike? Yeah. No. Uh, I remember everyone had the Kona Stinky. If you had the Kona Stinky, that meant you were fucking... Legit. Yeah. Nice. That's such an addictive sport to watch. I think it's so cool. It's nuts. The little, like, um, I don't know, ra- rises that you ride yep. on yeah. and going down and Kay. they go so fast. Gam's husband, Michael, he he competes in downhill. Does he? Yeah. Really? Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. He competed um, last weekend, I think. That's uh, sick. Whenever, what, whenever, he, whenever he came here last, he had competed... Uh, recently and was doing really well and then came off uh, and he was quite upset about it yeah that's nuts yeah. Like came off the bike yeah oh. but he's he's right into it fuck yeah so is michael kingston really yeah he gets into it oh that's awesome um all right i've got a little new segment it's pretty much just for you thomas oh, anyone thanks. else can chime in if they want <laughs> it's called fake news or nah <laughs> <laughs> If anyone, and if anyone wants to send through, anyone listening, I'm going to keep this a regular thing. So start sending them through. I'll put up a question box next week, fake news or nah. You guys send me something through that you want to hear uh, Thomas's opinion on. All right. Today we've only got, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six. First one. 
Red meat's dangerous. Fake news. Why is it fake news? How is it dangerous? Well, where did this come from? So where it comes from is they say that burnt <laughs> red meat is a carcinogen. Mm-hmm. 100% true. Yeah. Lots of the things that we eat are carcinogens and they get counteracted by the antioxidants in your dark chocolate that you eat. So is it bad for you? Is it dangerous? Can it cause cancer? Yeah, if you only eat burnt meat and nothing else for the rest of your life, probably. <laughs> Hang on, what's a carcinog- carcinogen? Am I saying that right? Cancer. It's a type of car. <laughs> <laughs> it just Bruce means, surrounded. yeah, what, what Bridget said, it causes cancer. A compound oh, okay. that, that can create cancerous cells. Right. Um, and, and carcinogens, like we get cancerous cells in our bodies that don't manifest into having cancer uh, mm. because of things like antioxidants. Uh, but yeah, 100% fake news. Fat burners. Uh, for burning fat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not fake news. Not fake news. Can they contribute to burning fat? Um, they have compounds in them that are uh, involved in the process of of burning fat, but taking a fat burner in the absence of the stuff that actually liberates fat is a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Like if you're fat and you eat like shit, taking a fat burn is not going to make you less fat. It's going to make you the same fatness and, and more very anxious. sweaty, <laughs> and very sweaty, and sweaty and anxious. <laughs> and on edge. Because uh, there's uh, there's just a very high uh, caffeine content in most fat burners, isn't there? Yeah, there's caffeine. There's certain like amino acids and compounds that can, can contribute to the pathway of like liberating fat and breaking it down, but like. They're like they're like adding the the one percenter in. Yeah, you know the ninety nine percent of eat less and do more exercise is what mm. matters. Is there any? Is there still any like reputable coaches that still you know recommend taking a fat burner? Probably, probably yeah. heaps. Yeah, because again, it's not like it's a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. Um, especially you know you take a pre training and it acts as a pre workout, and then it's got some of those compounds that might contribute to um, more efficiency of the fat burning pathway. It's not. It's not bad. Yeah, sweet. Um, carnivore diet for performance. Carnivore diet for performance. Yeah. What kind of performance are we talking? So it's trending at the moment in rugby union, rugby league. Yeah, fake news. Yeah, absolutely. So what what is a carnivore diet specifically? Is it just red meat? Yeah, it's going to give you cancer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, us, James. He's the one that's done yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, well, like, because you, yeah, you have. When I did it, no, I didn't just eat red meat. I ate all types of meat. So chicken, fish. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. And then were you strict on like no, like sauce? No. I'd like have a few sauce. sauces, but I'd have like a keto friendly sauce. Mm. Oh, by the way, I only did this for like seven days. Because <laughs> you're so constipated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally why I stopped because other people were saying, you know, oh, you know, I fucking almost shat my pants. And I was like, man, I haven't shat in like four days. <laughs> That's wild. Mm. Sounds That's so horrible. weird. Yeah. I, so when you say carnivore diet, is this suggesting only eating meat? Well, like I, I don't know what the parameters that people consider yeah. carnivore diet is. Like. So there's some footy players that play professionally that are, you know, just having big T bone steaks, fasting. Um, they have drinking bone broth. Uh, you know, they're having some keto friendly, uh, keto friendly like sauces and things like that. But yeah, predominantly just meat. Normally, what you see, um, uh, what what the studies have shown, as far as I'm aware, like I haven't looked at this stuff for quite a while, is that you get an initial spike that's more placebo, mm-hmm. like so an initial spike in in, in performance because you're telling yourself you feel good, and then if you monitor performance over an, a more extended period of time, the the average performance drops quite a bit. So, yeah, I'd say fake news. Mm. All right. Power building. Power building. Um, I'm just going to say fake news because I hate that word <laughs> so much. <laughs> That's why I brought it up. Yeah, trying to be strong and big at the same time, no problem trying to do that. If you're trying to be the strongest or the biggest at the same time, waste time. Yeah. So power building, like, to me, it's just strength training. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It's people it's being like... Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing like hypertrophy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then strength training on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's, it's uh, like, it, again, I shouldn't shit on it too much because can you do it and have effective results? Yeah, fuck yeah, you can. Um, is it going to be the best thing for either? No, you're probably going to be bigger and stronger if you took the same year of training doing power building and doing six months hypertrophy and six months strength. Mm. 
Like you, mm. you, you're probably going to get a better result rather than half assing it for the entire time. I used to just think it was just a fucking a marketing ploy by influencers. You know, they were just jacked and they're like, hey, I'm strong too. Follow it's my program. Pretty much what it is. Yeah, power building. Yeah, because like, I feel like as soon as you say power building, I just think that's powerlifting training. Yeah. When I first first heard of it, it was Russell Orhe that was selling it. Right. Like, um, he's the man. He was like one of the first reasons why I got into powerlifting. But I saw him and he was fucking jacked because mm. he was a bodybuilder and he's genetically gifted as well. And he's, Was he a bodybuilder? Yeah. And he's oh. really strong. So I was like, yeah, I'm fucking doing that. Mm. And then the more I got into it, I was like, this guy's just a powerlifter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he just did powerlifting, but he just, because of powerlifting well, training, got we, Like, our accessories are, you know, exactly, you know what I mean? yeah. Um, cooking oil, uh, seed oils, bad for you. Like grapeseed oil and stuff like olive that? Olive oil, any seed oils. Is olive oil a seed oil? No. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Like canola oil. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no. No. Fake news. Where did this come from, too? I feel like this is common in the carnivore world, too. Yeah, carnivore, paleo, that kind of stuff. We're mm-hmm. not meant to eat grains and seeds and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's just nonsense. Yeah, right. No, we're, our bodies are better than that. Yeah, sweet. That's what I thought. Yeah, much better than that. Um, That's all I just got. F- don't eat slugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're yes. talking about it before. That fucking... I l- yeah, I oh, learned shit. about this this morning, the kid that ate a slug and it had a parasite and then he eventually died. And what was the name of the disease he had? Uh, it had a disease. It's it's a parasite that sounds like a fake parasite. Yeah, it was like rat mole or some uh, yeah, shit. Yeah, no, it's got rat in it. Yeah, it'll be the... It's uh, it's still on my... <laughs> 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 um, so how come everyone's rat, talking about this again? Rat lungworm. Yeah, rat oh. lungworm. It would have just been like one of these pages or podcasts mentioned it on the internet and then all of these like... You know, like it's a trend to be like an internet reporter now. Mm. Like everyone's got mm. like a news page or, mm. or whatever. Someone would have seen it and thought it was interesting. Now it's just popping up everywhere again. Mm. Rat lungworm. Yeah, don't eat slugs. <sighs> don't eat the slugs. Unless you're don't vegan. Slugs. Um, that's pretty much us. That's all we got for fake news or nah. So like I said before, send us through some uh, fake news or nah questions for Tom, bro. Did any of you see this morning uh, Jamal Brown a pull 500 Yeah, that's, yes. that's nuts. Why? Yes. Absolutely oh insane. my God. I didn't see that. Yeah, we'll show I'm you after. Look. Yes, please. I reckon you should just put a suit on now. I showed I showed about 10 people in the gym as soon as I saw it. Yeah. I was like, this is nuts. I really hope he pulls it in competition next year. He is jacked out you of his brain as well. You reckon he can grip well. that? It's hard to say. That's so wild. What what's his best in competition? Four sixty or four four? No, no. Dan Griggs got four sixty one or whatever. I think his best is like four forty or four fifty. I'm not too sure. He always fails them on balance and things like that, mm. though. Right. But um, it's yeah. a hard thing with these strap pullers. Like you see them hanging down their fingertips, and you know it's not quite the same. Mm. But I mean, like straps, no strap, whatever. That is just phenomenal. It's He's Strap's got such a pretty looking sumo as well. Just mm. wild. Speaking of nuts as well, um, one of my clients, Lim Shanty. You know, he's doing like, was it? Yeah, three and a half times body weight for a triple or whatever. Mm. Do you reckon pound for pound he's, is there anyone else at zero that can deadlift three and a half times body weight? I don't know. It would be pretty cool if he got to be the first zero lifter to... Josh. Josh. Oh, Josh to cool, yeah. Yeah, he's done 340 or 345. 340. 340 on a he's deadlift bar. 340. Mm. Yeah, yeah, on a deadlift on a bar deadlift at, bar. at under 90. Mm. I mean, that's almost four times body weight. That's yeah. Insane. Yeah, right. Remember we've seen him try pull 350. When was on that? an Alico. Yeah. And he got it off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I was don't know when it was. He maxed out every week sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's so nuts. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Every time <laughs> <laughs> so you know what though? Every time I watch Josh train, I'll, I always just think, I take too long. <laughs> yeah. So quick. <laughs> I watch him get up to 350 in about five minutes. I'm like, all right, I, I don't need to take as long as I do. He trains he so hard, I don't know how he does so it, fast. I've tried. Mm. I've tried to he like doesn't stretch or anything like that and he just Starts He's picking up the bar. It. Just keeps adding and reds. I tried doing that and... I was about to make the no. joke that, well, it's because you're sitting up your tripod and... But he does the exact same thing. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he yeah. does. He definitely slows down when he gets to his top sets, but he gets to his top sets extremely So quick. fast. Yeah. Then you watch him do his accessories and he gets through them... Uh, he gets through them really quickly too. We've just been conditioned to really slow people for a long time. Yeah. 
So seeing someone train at normal speed feels like it's on times 10. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because I go to a commercial gym and I'll be there for 40 minutes. I've yeah. done the same workout that I do here that would take me two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Um, that's pretty much us. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye. All right. Catch us later. See you. Thank you so much for listening to the Zero Podcast. If you want more information, head to our Instagram, zero underscore weakness. Hit the link in the bio for all of our services and any information on upcoming workshops and events. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review so we can have a broader reach and answer more people's questions. Thank you once more.